Hi boys and girls, I'm Bob Whitey and this is Trailers from Hell. I'm here to talk about the 1971 film Bananas, which is only the second film in Woody Allen's long and prolific career as writer-director. Uh, there are other Woody Allen movies I love just as much as Bananas, but I chose this film for Trailers from Hell because it contains original material shot for the trailer which isn't found in the film itself. Uh, in this trailer, Woody discusses the film in an interview with his friend Frank Buxton. The entire interview is improvised with selected moments cut together with scenes from the movie. So after you hear me babble over the trailer, go back and watch it without my voiceover because it's a testament to Woody's well-honed improvisational skills, which is something you don't hear that much about, and also his willingness to just be very silly. Here it is. And now Woody Allen with a few words about his new film. Bananas is from the era of the so-called earlier funny films of Woody Allen, basically meaning pre-Annie Hall. I was 11 or 12 when Bananas was released and I found it hysterical. I saw it twice at the time, I've seen it countless times since, and as the cliché goes, it still holds up. Bananas, Sleeper, and Love and Death, incidentally, all have basically the same plot. Allen plays a nebbish who inadvertently becomes the unlikely leader of a group of rebels attempting to overthrow a corrupt government. In Bananas, it's a Latin American banana republic called San Marcos, portrayed in the film by Puerto Rico. The plots of all of these films are incidental and really, they just provide an excuse for Woody Allen and his co-stars to do and say a lot of funny things. And funny this film is. The dialogue is witty, the performances are spot on, there's slapstick, there's improvisation, political satire, silent movie homages, and there are no dull spots, it just zings along. These early films of Allen's really announced to the film world that there was a new important comic voice on the scene who was taking his cue from the classic comedy tradition of the Marx Brothers, W.C. Fields, even the silent greats like Chaplin and Keaton. Alan loves those performers, but he also loves the films of Bob Hope. And you see Hope's influence all over Bananas, both in Alan's character of the nebbishy loser with delusions of grandeur who thinks himself a great ladies' man, but you, you even hear Hope's inflection and timing in Alan's delivery. So think of early Bob Hope when you watch Bananas or Love and Death, and you'll find the influence is unmistakable. Banana was co-written by Alan's boyhood friend Mickey Rose, who also co-wrote Take the Money and Run, and an earlier unproduced screenplay called The Filmmaker, and they remained close until Rose's death in 2000. 13. Alan's love interest is played by the hilarious and gifted Louise Lasser, whom 70s TV buffs will know from Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. She and Alan were married in the 1960s and had divorced prior to Bananas, but always remained friends. Uh, just as Woody's romance with Diane Keaton had already played out prior to Annie Hall, but they also remained a, a great screen team. Bananas doesn't boast the kind of all-star cast for which Alan would eventually become known, but there are a couple of scenes in which Howard Cosell plays himself to great comic effect. The kids out there can Google him. Keep your eyes open for a memorable cameo by a young, then unemployed actor named Sylvester Stallone, five years prior to Rocky. You can't miss him. He's one of the subway thugs. These days, Alan famously scores his films with needle drops of recordings of vintage jazz and American standards, but Bananas boasts an excellent score by the late Marvin Hamlish, early in his career here. There's actually a very hard-to-find soundtrack album. I, I have it. I made a digital copy for Edgar Wright, so if you really want to hear it, I'm sure he'll accommodate you. Just ask him. Woody has always downplayed the value of these early films. He calls them trivial, and granted, you know, they have very little on their mind other than getting laughs, but at that they succeed in spades. Pound for pound, Bananas contains as many laughs as any other comedy, you know, I can think of offhand, even if it would annoy the hell out of uh, Woody Allen to hear me say that. 